breakwater for BRAF V600E patients. This is associated with poor prognosis. As a result, we have to use the strongest therapy up front. With that in mind, can you please touch on the study design and its findings? Yeah, so Breakwaters addresses this issue of what to do with people with BRAF V600E mutations. And again, it's important to emphasize that specifically that BRAF mutation, because there are other BRAF mutations that don't qualify for this approach. We've known for a while, you know, I think going back five, 10 years to sort of doing more aggressive chemo upfront in BRAF mutant patients, because these are people who don't typically do well with standard full fox Avastin or just full fox full theory. There's been this strain of looking at NGS data, finding the BRAF patients and saying, hey, we better address these patients separately because we know we might only have one or two shots to get disease under control. And then a few years ago, we had approval for the doublet regimen and grafenib and cetuximab in the second line or higher setting for the BRAF V600E mutation. So that sort of begged the question, can we move this up to the first line setting? That's what Breakwater does. It addresses the first line setting in BRAF V600. Took adult patients, no prior systemic treatment. So first diagnosis, crucially get that NGS data back before we make that first line decision now. This is a change for many of us uh, because we've been sort of used to just starting with full fox and wait a couple of weeks for the NGS data to come back. And then maybe it's BRAF mutant, you'll add iron in the TCAN and make it convert it to full fox theory. But looking at this now, I think it's really important that we get, in addition to MSI, we get BRAF data as soon as possible in, in this population. So adult patients, no prior systemic treatment for a metastatic disease. Obviously, they had to have measurable disease. Patients were randomized to the doublet and grafenib or cetuximab, the doublet plus chemotherapy, or the standard of care, which typically would be full box or full fear in the setting. The lesson here is that the regimen combining the doublet with full fox did the best. They did the best at six months. You saw separation in the curve at six months and more separation at the 12-month time point, roughly 80% down versus 66%. That's, that's a big absolute increase in, uh, in interim overall survival at 12 months. This, to me, settles the question of should we wait or should we treat first? Yes, we should wait for sort of final oral survival data, but I think this settles the question of how do we treat BRAF mutant colorectal cancer? The answer is start off with throw everything at it. That includes Encoraf and Evansetuximab up front with full box. Hello. Thank you for covering that. I think it's important to reiterate that roughly about 10% of metastatic colorectal cancer patients have this BRAF V600E mutation. Because of this, checking NGS upfront is so important. The combination of encorafenib, cetuximab, and Folfox based off breakwater should now be our standard of care treatment option. A portion of BRAF V600E disease could also be MSI high. This is a good segue in our next study, Checkmate 8HW. 